Okay, family. In 1 Samuel 30, we discover that David at, at um, Ziklag, when he and his men returned to their camp to find that the Amalekites had abducted their wives, sons, and daughters and burned everything else to the ground. Scripture says very clearly that no one had been killed, but it was all gone. The passage tells us that David's men wept over the loss until they had no more strength to weep. They were so distraught, they even, te- they even entertained thoughts of stoning David for his responsibility in the calamity. In this al- alarming situation, David had to run to the Lord to strengthen himself. But even more, the word says that David also inquired of the Lord. At a time when he could have been tempted to distance, distance himself from the Lord in resentment over the unfairness of the loss of his and his men's bitterness towards him, David instead drew close to the Lord. Here's what he asked God in verse 8 of 1 Samuel 30. Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? The Lord supplied immediately clear direction in response to David's question. Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. The rest of chapter 30 relates to the outcome of David's moving in obedience to the word from the Lord. Verses 18 and 19 sum it up best. So David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away, and nothing of theirs was lacking, either small or great, sons or daughters, spoil or anything which they had taken from them. David recovered all. Are you getting a spark of encouragement from this word? Are you ready to pursue? Okay, family, I have a video. And I pray that the Holy Spirit would speak through me to you. And I bind anything in my mind or in my heart that is not of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And I loose the Holy Spirit of God to speak through me to the church. Our adversary does not need a reason to attack anyone. 1 Peter 5 and 8, He walketh about seeking whom he may devour. John 10 and 10, The devil's reason is this, he has come to kill, steal, and destroy. We need to be armored up at all times. We need to have no fear, but only faith. Faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He has more than equipped us to deal with the serpents and scorpions that come into our lives. He has given us all that we need, and He is our rear guard. So remember, first thing to do always is to armor up. Father God, I ask to be filled with your love to overflowing in Jesus' name. I want to operate out of your love each and every day. I surrender completely to you and your will for my life. I ask you to let your Holy Spirit speak this prayer through me against the powers and principalities that come against your children. Father, in Jesus' name, by prayer and faith, I put on your whole armor that I may stand against the wiles of the devil. I put on your helmet of salvation. Let the same mind be in me that is in Christ Jesus. I put on your breastplate of righteousness, the righteousness of Christ. I put on the girdle of truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. As it is written in John 14 and 6, the truth, integrity, and the holiness of God. I put on your sandals of the gospels of peace. Help us to stand on the solid ground of Jesus and to be as wise as serpents and as harmless as doves. Above all, I put on your shield of faith to quench every fiery dart, arrow, spear, and missile the enemy shoots our way. And Lord, I equip and draw out your powerful sword of the Spirit, activated by your holy word that's alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. As it is written in Hebrews 4 and 12, or offensive and defensive weapons. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you keep the same hedge of protection around me, my family, my mind, my heart, and my emotions, as is written in Job 1 and 10. Father, in Jesus' name, I ask you to keep an encampment of your powerful angels around me and my loved ones, 24 hours a day, as it is written in Psalms 34, 7, and 91, 11, and 12. Father, I just praise you and thank you that your glory is my rear guard, as written in Isaiah 52 and 12 and 58 and 8. In Jesus' name, I ask you to surround me with your supernatural wall of fire and to insulate me and my loved ones from any assaults of our enemies. Father, in Jesus' name, by faith, I claim your promise to be my shield and protector, as written in Genesis 15 and 1 and Psalms 3 and 3. In the mighty name of Jesus, I command my thoughts to come under the obedience and captivity of Jesus Christ, as written in 2 Corinthians 10 and 5. In the name of Jesus, the name that is above every other name, 
and all things as written in Philippians 2 and 9 and 10 and Ephesians 1 20 and t- through 23. I bind up every unclean spirit and assignment coming against me, my family, my brethren, from, by, or through, anyone or anything, named or unnamed, known or unknown, seven generations back. In the name of Jesus, I bind up the principalities, the powers, the rulers of darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness and hosts in high places. I bind up the prince of the power of the air in Jesus' most holy, holy, holy name. I bind up the strong man, the old man, and every prince and stronghold, the spirit of confusion, illusion, and delusion in Jesus' name. I bind up the spirit of infirmity, sickness, disease, pain, addiction, affliction, and calamity, the devourer, the destroyer, the accuser, the deceiver, the corrupter, and every spirit of poverty in the name of Jesus. I bind up the spirit of strife and division, backbiting and gossip, critical and judgmental spirits, spirits of resistance and hindrance. In Jesus' name, I bind up every spirit of retribution, revenge, and retaliation, and all the lying, seducing, deceiving spirits of deception and division. In the name of Jesus, I bind up every root of fear, doubt, unbelief, discouragement, and every deadly deed from despair to depression. The spirit of pride, rebellion, disobedience, self, ego, independence, unforgiveness, bitterness, lust, and the flesh. The spirit of Babylon and Baal, we bind you in your gateways and demand you to release those in your grip. In Jesus Christ's most powerful, powerful name. The Lord Jesus Christ rebuke you, you evil, unclean spirits. We come against you and we crush your head under our foot. I loose in the name of Jesus Christ, God gifts of wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, miracles, prophecy, discerning spirits, the gift of tongues and interpreting tongues, the gift of administration, the gift of helping others. I loose in the name of Jesus the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. I loose and accept in Jesus' most holy name, deliverance, freedom, liberation, hope, gladness of heart, healing, and wholeness, mercy, and grace, blessings and favor and restoration of the years of the locusts have eaten. The resurrection power of Jesus Christ, a mighty harvest and a boldness to witness for Jesus Christ. All glory to God the Father and praise and glory to God for arming us and equipping us to be more than victors in Jesus Christ's most holy, holy, holy name. Amen and amen, church. When you are feeling persecuted, beaten down, trodden, this is the prayer you need to go to. Pray this prayer with faith. Stand in faith. He goes before us to make the crooked pathway straight. He more than equips us with everything we need to beat the enemy. He has given us his armor, and his armor has no no, no armor on the back because he is our rear guard. Believe this in faith. God bless you all. In Jesus Christ's most holy, holy name. Amen.